infections involving the joints sometimes? Um, they uh, do, although it's not a uh, the most common problem uh, uh, in uh, this particular uh, more of an group of type of reaction. Yeah, what they tend to do is uh, they actually have bone problems, but uh, their bone problems are more related to what is so-called sickle cell crisis. And the sickle cell crisis uh, uh, shows itself in different ways. For instance, uh, uh, the infant uh, often has what is called a hand foot uh, disease because uh, the bones in the hand and the feet uh, swell up and they're very painful. And uh, uh, obviously a little baby who cannot communicate well will be very cranky or very uh, irritable without a true uh, reason and occasionally you see the swelling in the hands and the feet. So these patients should be immunized against pneumococcal disease? Absolutely. Uh, the uh, advent, uh, they have been uh, immunized against uh, pneumococcal disease with something called uh, the um, pneumococcal vaccine which was not conjugated. Uh, that uh, was given at age two. Uh, now there is a, a, a pneumococcal vaccine that can be actually given much earlier, and it started at about age two months uh, with uh, a complete immunization by the age one year. It, at the moment, it's not yet clear whether or not this immunization so early uh, has uh, will eventually eliminate the need of uh, putting this patient on prophylactic penicillin. There is no study available at this time, and since the prophylaxis with penicillin is essentially free of complication, uh, the moment all patients with sickle cell disease should be on penicillin. Well, penicillin prophylaxis has been, do, been done for about 50 years now, hasn't it? The prophylaxis with penicillin, it's close to that. I mean, it's been for a very long time. This, uh, there was a very big study in the very early 80 that essentially established it as a the way to go uh, for this particular uh, disorder. And one of the things that uh, it is important to notice is that kids with sickle cell disease used to die very commonly uh, prior to this, while instead uh, death in the first uh, 20 years of life in patients with sickle cell disease is fortunately a rare event. It still exists at a level that are higher than the general population, but it is a rare event. So besides getting penicillin and uh, giving the kid a vaccine against pneumococcus, what other things can you treat? Well, the, there are many things that one needs to do. Uh, for instance, uh, one of the uh, most devastating complications of sickle cell disease is something called, uh, is a stroke. Uh, the sickle cell disease affects the blood vessels, among other things. And uh, young kids with uh, sickle cell disease may have stroke. It's, there is a, a significant incidence of this problem. A stroke is essentially a uh, plugging, an occlusion. And what can we do to prevent that complication? Well, interestingly enough, in the last 10 years, a lot of study has gone into this, and there is uh, very good evidence, very good studies that say that uh, measuring the blood flow in some critical blood vessels in the brain through something called a transcranial Doppler which sounds terrible, but it's actually it's a very simple and non-invasive uh, procedure. Um, it's, uh, it's essentially an ultrasound of the blood vessels, and we do ultrasounds for all kinds of things. That actually gives us a very good idea whether or not a person is at